Now we're going to talk about the common plant life cycle, bryophytes and seedless vascular plants. The similarity among plant life cycles is evidence that all plants share a common ancestor. The plant life cycle is called alternation of generations, in which a multicellular diploid stage alternates with a multicellular haploid stage. So here's the diploid stage, and here's the haploid stage. A zygote develops by mitotic cell division into a multicellular diploid sporophyte. The sporophyte produces haploid spores by meiosis. So the sporophyte is kind of the mature plant here. And this mature plant is going to produce these haploid spores. Haploid spores divide by mitosis into multicellular haploid gametophytes. So here's a multicellular haploid gametophyte. The haploid gametophyte produces gametes by mitotic cell division. These sex cells fuse, so here are the gametes, they fuse together through fertilization to produce the zygote, and that starts the life cycle anew. The sporophyte and gametophyte shown in this generalized plant life cycle are those of seedless vascular plants. Substituting images in the alternation of generations produces diagrams of other plant life cycles. So here you can see the sporophyte form for bryophytes, seedless vascular plants, gymnosperms, angiosperms, and then you can see the gametophytes and what they look like for angiosperms, gymnosperms, seedless vascular plants, and bryophytes. Note that the size of the sporophyte relative to the gametophyte varies throughout plant groups. So we're going to start by talking about the bryophytes. So bryophytes live on land, but they have no vascular tissue, so they're pretty short plants. They also lack true leaves and roots. Materials move from cell to cell within the plant by diff diffusion and osmosis. Examples of bryophytes include liverworts, hornworts, and mosses. The bryophyte life cycle is an alternation of generations. So again, the gametes fuse to form the zygote. The zygote reproduces by mitosis to produce the sporophyte. This is kind of like if we compare this to people, an egg and a sperm were to come together to form the baby, the zygote. And the baby, all those cells in that initial zygote are going to multiply in order to turn into the sporophyte. If we're comparing this to people, then it would be a person, an adult human being. Now the adult human being is going to produce an egg or sperm cells, depending on the sex of the individual. Sporophytes produce haploid spores. So for us, we call them gametes. For them, they call them spores. Now the thing that differs here is our gametes are going to immediately then fuse and go to the zygote. We don't have an alternation of generations. But these spores are going to divide by mitosis and turn into a gametophyte. And a gametophyte is kind of like a whole other plant. And that gametophyte is going to produce gametes, and then those gametes are going to fuse together to form the zygote. So we have this diploid stage and this haploid stage. But they can grow into almost mature plants in this gametophyte stage. So this will kind of be like if our egg or sperm cells turn into an individual and then they ended up producing gametes, and then finally the gametes were to be fertilized and produce the baby. So haploid spores form by meiosis in the sporophyte tip. So here you can see that. Spores are released from the sporophyte, and then the young gametophyte grows, and you can see it kind of looks like a little plant. There's male and fem female gametophytes, and they produce different types of um, 
gametes, so sperm cells and egg cells. Gametes travel from the male to the female gametophytes in water. When the sperm meets the egg, the zygote forms within the female gametophyte. So here is the egg. Water is going to transport the sperm cells into the female, and then it's going to be fertilized in the female to make the zygote. The zygote develops by mitosis into a sporophyte, and the cycle begins again. So just as an overview, this is kind of what we just talked about. And here you can see that zygote is then going to grow into another sporophyte. And it's going to grow out of the female plant. Now we're going to talk about seedless vascular plants. So seedless vascular plants still don't reproduce using seeds, but they do have vascular tissue, so they're allowed to grow a little bit bigger. Seedless vascular plants have xylem and phloem, but not seeds. These plants typically have true roots, stems, and leaves. Examples of seedless plants include, or seedless vascular plants include lycopods, which are not shown, the whisk ferns, true ferns, and horsetails. The seedless vascular plant life cycle is an alternation of generations. Haploid spores form by meiosis in sporangia on sporophyte leaves. So the sporangium, or spores are released from the sporangia. Each spore might develop by mitosis into a gametophyte. Gametophytes produce gametes by mitosis. So here's the egg cell, and then here's the sperm cell. Gametes travel from male to female gametophytes in water. When the sperm cell meets the egg, a zygote forms within the gametophyte tissue. The zygote develops by mitosis into a sporophyte, and the cycle begins again. So as an overview, this is what this looks like. And then here you can see the young sporophyte branching from the gametophyte. 